Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Biopass Technology. This part of TCA cycle includes significance, inhibitors, and regulation. Coming to significance, citric acid cycle is called as amphibolic in nature because it has anabolic function and also catabolic function. So now we will see details of each function. Coming to catabolic function of TCA cycle, so when two carbon compound estel CoA enters into TCA cycle, it is oxidized. So the two carbons of estel CoA are removed in the form of two molecules of carbon dioxide. So during this process, energy is also generated. So this is the catabolic nature of TCA cycle. Coming to anabolic role of TCA cycle, here the intermediates of the cycle are used for the synthesis of various compounds. For example, transamination. So this mechanism helps in the synthesis of non-essential amino acids from intermediates of TCA cycle. For example, alpha ketoglutaric acid is one of the intermediates of TCA cycle. This on transamination produces glutamic acid. Same way, oxaloestate is intermediate of TCA cycle. This on transamination produces aspartate. So alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase, they convert alpha ketoglutarate to glutamate and oxaloestate to aspartate. So in this way, the non-essential amino acids, glutamate and aspartate, can be synthesized from the intermediates of the TCA cycle. Coming to gluconeogenic role of TCA cycle, so the intermediates of the TCA cycle can be used for the synthesis of glucose by gluconeogenesis. For example, if you see succinyl CoA, it can be converted into fumarate, fumarate is converted into oxaloestate. So this oxaloestate can be converted into phosphoenol pyruvate and after that the reactions of gluconeogenesis will take place for the synthesis of glucose. So here, succinyl CoA is formed from the amino acids like isoleucine, methionine, valine and also from the propionate. So all these serve as the precursors for the synthesis of succinyl CoA. So these amino acids that is valine, isoleucine, methionine are called as glucogenic because the part of this carbon skeleton is used for the synthesis of glucose. In the same way, histidine, proline, glutamine, arginine can be converted into glutamate and glutamate on transamination is converted into alpha ketoglutarate. So in this way, these four amino acids can also serve as gluconeogenic amino acids or glucogenic amino acids. So tyrosine and phenylalanine, they supply the carbon skeleton which is used for the formation of fumarate. So fumarate can be converted into malate, malate to oxaloestate, oxaloestate again the reversal of glycolysis reactions for the synthesis of glucose. So in this way, the intermediates of the TCA cycle starting from alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl CoA, fumarate and oxaloestate, they can serve as a source for the synthesis of glucose. Coming to role of TCA cycle in the synthesis of heme, one of the intermediates that is succinyl CoA of TCA cycle can condense with glycine to form delta amino levulinic acid or in short ALA. So this is the first step in the synthesis of heme. So in this way, by providing succinyl CoA, Intermediates of TCA cycle that is alpha ketoglutaric acid and oxaloestate after transamination they form glutamate and aspartate respectively. So this glutamate and aspartate they can serve as the source of atoms in the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines. Coming to role of citric acid cycle in the fatty acid synthesis. The starting material required for the synthesis of fatty acids is acetyl CoA. Actually the synthesis of fatty acids takes place in cytosol but acetyl CoA is formed in the mitochondria. So the acetyl CoA which is formed from pyruvate in the mitochondria this cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane. For this acetyl CoA is converted into citrate by the action of enzyme citrate synthase in mitochondria. So this citrate can cross the mitochondrial membrane and when it enters into cytosol, in the cytosol, by the action of enzyme citrate lyase, it can be converted back to acetyl CoA and oxaloestate. So now the acetyl CoA which is formed in the cytosol is used in the synthesis of fatty acids. So in this way, it supplies the acetyl CoA which is required for the synthesis of fatty acids. Coming to one more important aspect of TCA cycle that is anaplerotic reactions. During anabolic and catabolic reactions, 
the intermediates of the TCA cycle are used. If these intermediates which are used, if they are not filled up, then it will affect the rate of TCA cycle. So TCA cycle will be interrupted. So in order to prevent this interruption due to the diversion of intermediates in the synthesis of anabolic and catabolic reactions, some reactions will fill up the intermediates of the TCA cycle. So those reactions which fill these intermediates are called as the anoplerotic reactions or simply call them as filling up reactions. So this is the importance of anoplerotic reactions. If these reactions fail, then the intermediates are continuously utilized but they are not filled up. So that leads to decreased rate of TCA cycle and that affects the energy production. Coming to important anaplerotic reactions, pyruvate after carboxylation it is converted into oxaloestate by the action of enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. So pyruvate also forms the intermediate malate by the action of enzyme malic enzyme. Aspartate forms the intermediate oxaloestate by transamination catalyzed by aspartate transaminase. Glutamate forms alpha ketoglutarate by transamination. So here you can see the amino acids which form pyruvate after formation of pyruvate this undergoes carboxylation to form oxaloestate. So oxaloestate levels can be filled by pyruvate. The same way oxaloestate is also formed from aspartate by transamination. So fumarate is formed from tyrosine and phenylalanine. Alpha ketoglutarate is filled up by glutamate by the action of transaminase as we discussed earlier. Succinyl CoA is filled up by valine, isoleucine and methionine and also from the propionate. So in this way, the intermediates are continuously filled whenever they are utilized in the anabolic reactions. Coming to inhibitors of TCA cycle, fluoroacetate, it inhibits echonitase, arsenides, it inhibits the key enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and melanoid by competitive inhibition inhibits succinate dehydrogenase. Coming to regulation, the key enzymes of the TCA cycle are citrate synthase, isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So the activity of or the rate of TCA cycle depends upon these three key enzymes. But what decides the activity of these three enzymes? So the active or inactive state of these three enzymes depends upon energy status of the cell. If the cell is in energy rich state, that is if it has high amounts of ATP or NADH, then it leads to decreased activity of these three key enzymes. If cell is in energy poor state, that is when the concentration of ADP and NAD is more than ATP and NADH, then it, it activates the key enzymes of the TCA cycle. So citrate synthase is allosterically inhibited by ATP. Isocitrate dehydrogenase is activated by ADP and inhibited by ATP and NADH. Alpha ketoglutarate is inhibited by succinyl CoA and NADH. So, the basic function of TCA cycle is to provide energy. So, when a cell is energy rich state, that is decided by the ATP ADP ratio or NADH NAD plus ratio. So, when ATP ADP ratio is more or NADH or NAD plus ratio is more, then it indicates the energy rich state which decreases the activity of the key enzymes of TCA cycle. If ATP ADP ratio is low or NADH NAD plus ratio is low, then the activity of these key enzymes is increased.